I purchased this car for just a little more than $2,000, which I think is a pretty good deal for a 1967 Camaro these days. As you can see, the car is pretty rough. It's got a lot of rust. The front fenders are just kind of hanging on there by just a little bit of metal. We got our work cut out for us. Boy, have I learned a lot since then. Like I said earlier, this is my 67 Camaro we're working on. And luckily for me, the parts are pretty available. We've hooked up with Auto Metal Direct. They sell some of the highest quality sheet metal out there, and they're gonna help us out on this project. I'm gonna need a lot of panels, as you can see. So in this episode, we're doing the cow panel and the upper dash. We're also gonna strip the car and really see what we're working with. We started by removing the front clip off the Camaro. It was actually pretty easy. It just kind of fell off. The first thing we had to do was strip the car and really see what we're working with. With most of the paint removed chemically, we were able to come back and use a contour SCT to quickly strip the remaining paint. We were using a prototype at the time. This left with a nice brushed finish. And once we stripped the paint, we saw there actually was some good metal. The roof, the sail panels, and the top of the quarter panels are definitely savable. With the car stripped, I knew the first thing we had to do was remove the cowl and dash. I started with the dash using a spot weld cutter. We offer a variety of different spot weld cutters, each available at eastwood.com, and through trial and error, you'll find which one works best for you. Next, I focused my attention to where the firewall meets the rest of the cow. As I found each spot weld, I used a circular motion with our bit to evenly cut through the existing spot weld. As you can see, the goal is to only cut the outer layer of sheet metal and separate it from the inner layer. At this point, a panel separating tool really comes in handy to help separate those two panels after you've drilled your spot welds. At this seam, you'll actually find three pieces of metal. We have the lower dash, the upper dash, and the firewall. We're gonna be removing the upper and lower dash and replacing it with an assembled unit from AMD. With a little bit of work, we were able to get the upper and lower dash free. Now I had to get an understanding of the condition of the firewall. First, I sprayed it down with some pre, wiped it off with a rag, and hit some rough areas with the wire brush. With it cleaned off, it was time to get some rust encapsulator on it, seal it up, and protect it from rusting any further. It also was going to give me a blank canvas to start my repair. You know why I'm here, don't you? Yeah. You sprayed rust encapsulator everywhere. Not just under the dash in a nice rusty spot to make it look good and keep it from rusting, but all over the firewall? Well, Randy, I was on a roll. It was getting to be about 1.15, my boss was gonna walk by. I had to make the car look good, so I, I went a little overboard. It's all gonna get stripped later, we're gonna blast the whole front of the car, we're gonna do it right. And you created more work for yourself. But it looks good. One color does look better. To make this heater box patch, I started with a rough cut piece of metal. Because it was so accessible, I didn't have to make a paper template. I held that rough cut piece of metal up with some stitch weld magnets, and then I marked my cut line. To cut, I used a throatless shear because I can cut the curve as well as a straight edge. Okay guys, you can see I finished fabbing up the piece to go in here to patch up the firewall. To get it set in, we're going to first clean up the surface. We're going to use our stitch weld magnets to locate it and then we'll tack it in with the MiG-135. 
Before I welded my patch, I have to clean up the surrounding area with the die grinder to get the bare metal. The MiG-135 is perfect for patchwork like this. We include the O23 wire, so it's ready to go for thin sheet metal. When you're using these stitch weld magnets, it's best to get about a half inch away to ensure the magnet doesn't affect your weld. In one corner of my patch, I have a little gap. To fix this, I'm gonna use a copper backer. That copper backer is gonna allow me to weld right through the steel onto the copper and prevent blowing through. Don't worry about those welds, Cody. I mean, seriously, welds like that is what allows us to sell so many grinders. I got nothing to say. <laughs> you are getting better. Thank you. And Thanks. you go through a lot of wardrobe changes, I'm noticing, and a lot of hairstyles. Yeah, hey, it's all part of growing up, right? <laughs> I noticed, you know, you've gotten a little grayer in the last couple of years. But yourself. we gotta cut that, <laughs> cut that part out. <laughs> AMD sheet metal, it fits great. But as with any panel, you need to clamp as you're welding it in. You need a tight fit up, and that's gonna ensure it's a good strong weld, and that that panel's exactly where it needs to be. It's important to have a variety of clamps in the shop. Whether it's a C-clamp, a pinch weld clamp, or an inner grip clamp, Eastwood.com has them all. Stock up now and be ready for your next project. While putting the cow and firewall together, Mark was nice enough to lend me a hand. He used a hammer to hold the two panels together while I welded them. When you're welding, it's nice to have a hammer nearby to do some minor tweaking or hold two panels together. So, there's some, there's some nice looking welds you got there. <laughs> well, Randy, you know, I'm not exactly a pro. You know, I got a vertical surface here. I got a very thin old firewall that I'm trying to attach to new AMD sheet metal. Yeah. And you know, this is good thick stuff. But with this thin firewall, I'm mm -hmm. blowing right through it. So what do you think you did wrong welding this? I think I got too much wire feed. I probably could have dropped down to a 23 wire instead of 30 I was using. Mm -hmm. And I think I was running a little too hot. So what I'm gonna do is drill 
in between each spot weld a uh, 3 16 hole and just get in there and do a nice, small, clean looking spot weld. I was able to do a few of them in some other spots. Yeah. And that came out pretty good. You know, ideally it'd be a, nice to have small hole diameters, but I'm filling the LE spot weld. So yeah. I think just taking my time, working in the center and then trying to attach to the Move. side. Go from the center where I got the new metal and then just oh, okay. go over and go touch to the, the side of the old metal. Yeah. You know, rather than try and fill like a true spot weld. Yeah, those are pretty big holes, but the, the, ones you, the ones you did up here, these look fine. Yeah, that's what I had up there. I did a 3 16th hole and I was able to get down to the base metal and then yeah. fill. So I'm going to do that in between each of the OE spot welds, you know, to give myself yeah. some more structure. It'll look a little better. So you grind these down, drill some new holes, weld them. Yep. And then, and then what's next? You got to weld up underneath anywhere? Yeah, I still have to attach the cowl to the side of the car. Yeah. On the inside. To, oh, in I there. think they call these kidneys, the saddle area. Okay. You know, that's a Camaro term, I believe. And then once I get that all attached, I'll be able to put the dash top on. Ooh. Yeah. And then you got a windshield, right? Yeah, I got a new windshield, so I'm gonna put that in, see where we're at, and hopefully this car is straight, it'll look good. Well, if the windshield's in there and everything lines up, you know all this is probably square, where it should be. I think I got a good chance. All right, well, it looks like you got some grinding to do, so I'll let you get back to that. <laughs> Like I told Randy, the plan is to knock all these welds down with the die grinder and start over. I'm going to drill in between each weld and I'm going to make sure that I just go through the first panel. With this Camaro project, I'm bound to make a couple mistakes along the way. The best thing I can do though is learn from them and improve on the next one. With the outside of the firewall complete, I had to crawl on and weld up the inside. So that actually worked out pretty well. Whatever changes you made, those spot welds look great. Yeah, between drilling the new holes and adjusting my settings a little, I was able to get a much better looking weld. Yep. So we got to cancel that grinder order now. I don't know about that. <laughs> there's a lot to do. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of welding on that car. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, guys, got my dash top clecoed in. I had Mark come over. We set a windshield in it. Fits good, fits real good. The, uh, the AMD sheet metal, it actually keys in. So you got one panel on top of another there and there's a little bend that follows this radius. So that's sitting nice. I got some uh, spot weld holes marked. Got some reference marks made. So this thing isn't gonna shift when I put it back on. So now I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna drill my spot weld holes I'm gonna weld it in with my big 175, so let's get to work. So I see you using a scribe there. You got a little tip or trick for us on that? Yeah, Randy. So I took a scribe and I came about a half inch off the edge of that dash panel and that way all my spot welds will be drilled to that same offset. So that center punch will actually drop right into that scribe line. And then just boom. Yep. And now boom. everything's going to look perfect. Now they're all going to be consistent. That's a cool little tip. Yeah. After laying everything out with the center punch, I then drilled all the holes using a block of wood as a backer. Before I installed the panel, I also hit each hole with a die grinder to expose some fresh clean metal. With the panel ready to go, we dropped it in place. We aligned the witness marks and clean coated it down. It's now ready to weld. As we weld the panel in, we're going to use clamps and ensure a tight fit up and a strong weld. This is going to take some time and we're going to bounce around the panel to ensure we don't get any warping, 
but it's gonna give us a nice, strong, quality spot weld. So to weld these holes up, I'm gonna start in the center of the hole, weld on the lower material, and then in a circular motion, work my way out. That's gonna allow me to get good penetration and a nice flat weld. So clamping's everything when you're trying to weld these panels together. In the situation where I had the dash panel on the dash top, I couldn't get a traditional clamp to fit. So I came up with a solution. I took a bolt and some washers, and I went to all the OE dash pad locations and tightened that down. This allowed me to get a nice tight fit and a perfect spot weld. As you can see, we nailed that alignment. With the panel in, I decided to go back and hit my welds and get them nice and flush. I know what you're thinking. Did he weld six of those brackets or only five? When all the excitement of restoring this car, I kind of lost track myself. But seeing how this is the Eastwood MiG-175 and can weld steel or stainless up to 5 sixteenths of an inch thick, you have to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? You and this firewall, what are you putting on it now? What do you mean? First it was rust encapsulator we had to remove, now what is it? So this is actually our slow cure panel epoxy. Oh, okay. So what we're trying to do here, we're testing it out. We want to see if we could do a liquid metal kind of product. So it's got much more strength than your typical body filler or even like a fiberglass reinforced filler. It's a little bit flexible, so it's kind of like a seam sealer. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to fill that factory seam. And it's also gonna give it some structural rigidity. It's not just like putting Bondo in and having it crack five, 10 years down the road. All right, so we're testing a cool product. Yes, for, yep. Is and this it's a, a new product or is it a product for a whole different use? Well, so it's a product we sell today. We sell it as the slow cure panel epoxy. You can hang quarters with this. You could fill small patches or holes with it. It's designed to bond tenaciously to metal. So we're trying it out here in a little bit different of an application than a typical adhesive. Okay.
Wow, Cody, that AMD sheet metal looks great. Yeah, man, everything went in nice. I mean, this is the first time I've ever done panels like this, and I think it came out great. You know, everything fit nice. The uh, Easy to install. Yeah, yep, and once I got that MIG welder set up good, you know, I was able to get some <laughs> nice clean spot welds. Yeah. I was able to good. fill all my Clico holes, and I was able, I mean, everything even mounted up nice to the OE dash. It looks really, really good. That's, Im that's impressive. Cool, so what's next? So now I'm working on a little A-pillar patch right here where the windshield channel is. Yeah. I got some rot there, got some rot on the top third. Uh -huh. Hoping I can salvage this middle piece Yeah. and then kind of just make some little templates here and here. You know, if it turns out I can't weld anything or attach yeah. any metal there, I'm gonna have to cut this all out and start from scratch. So I got some VersaBend work. Maybe shrink your stretcher? Definitely. And the, uh, gonna make it out of 18 gauge. Hoping this is still 18 gauge. <laughs> well, it looks kind of thick in spots. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any holes through there, so we'll see right. what happens. Awesome. That sounds good, dude. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Cool.